<clears throat> hey guys, Al here, Vitalized Seed. Hope everybody's doing well today. I uh, wanted to do an overview, it's been a little while, on carbon to nitrogen ratios. Um, it's something that comes up a lot, I think, this time of year. Guys are trying to decide, hey, spring planting's coming up, whether it's uh, full-scale agriculture, garden, food plots, etc. You know, how, how can I better my, my soils and um, the nutrient cycling uh, going forward? You know, that's something we talk about a lot. That's our whole one-two system is balanced carbon to nitrogen ratio, balanced subsequent planting, so one's feeding the next. But what does that mean? Well, first off, what's a carbon to nitrogen ratio? All plants, as you see here, wood bark, pine needles, straw, corn stalks, etc., have parts carbon to every part nitrogen. And simply as it sounds, it's a ratio. So how many parts carbon to every one part nitrogen? The higher that number, so corn stalks is one most people can visualize, um, the longer it's going to take that product to break down through microbial uh, breakdown. Now, if you have a really high microbial biomass because you've been following a lot of no-till um, practices and you've been following carbon and nitrogen and nutrient cycling and all of these different things, you might cycle corn stalks faster than somebody who doesn't, but still relative to lower carbon to nitrogen ratio plants, it's still going to take longer um, to cycle. So why is this important? Well, it's important because if, uh, let's keep on the corn stalks as for talking purposes. If you have a <clears throat> monoculture of corn stalks and it's 60 to 1 and you're trying to do no-till, and you're going to go in there in this coming spring and try to do corn on corn. You are going to have to take, make sure that you are adding the right amount of nitrogen for that new corn plant because all that corn stock, people go, oh, that's great. You have all this thatch cover. Well, that's good from, you know, reducing rainfall compaction and things like that. But as far as a nutrient release, you're really not going to get it. Um, <clears throat> And the reason is, is because it's going to take time and bacteria and fungi to go in and break that corn stalk down because it has a high carbon to nitrogen. And those that's where you get what's called nutrient tie-up. So in the food plot world, there's sometimes there'll be recommendations for really, really high rates of um, rye grain or winter wheat, um, which is good for the immediate growth. However, you have to be very careful if you have a monoculture of winter wheat or winter rye and you're going into the fall, into the spring and you're letting that get really tall and then you're going to so, say plant um, corn into that, you better be ready to apply nitrogen because if not, your microbes are simply going to have nutrient tie up and your corn is going to look really stunted. And it's one of the reasons why a lot of people give up on no-till. So then let's back up. So if, if you're looking at, well, okay, what's the vitalized one, two system? Well, our whole system is around balanced carbon nitrogen ratio so that we not only have plants that are high carbon nitrogen as far as how they're going to break down in, in the subsequent planting to feed that crop, but then, of course, the next planting being carbon load, so nitro boost to carbon load, and then carbon load to nitro boost. So we're continuing that cycle. As you work through the no-till systems, um, specifically for those who are able to do no-till, but even if you're doing light till or conservation tillage and stuff, and you're cycling these nutrients, you're going to start to see more fungi in your soil through PLFA or just observationally. You're going to start to see that some of these higher lignin-filled or higher carbon-to-nitrogen-filled plants, sorghum, sudan grass, what have you, are going to break down faster, specifically if you're following a system like ours or if you're doing, you know, row crop farming or your garden, keep that in mind. The last thing I'll mention on this is for your garden, let's say I use my uh, carbon load. We're coming out with Garden Booster this coming fall, um, but basically a Garden Boost is, is going to be a nice fall cover crop package for you know, gar garden sizes. It's a really important thing to keep in mind is when you are terminating that crop, do you want to terminate when it's lowered? Do you want to let it get really tall? And then what crop are you putting into there? If you're putting in tomatoes into a really thick, heavy thatch, again, what is your nutrient management plan? So for me, with the carbon load, we're very fortunate because it is a lot of carbon, but we also have a lot of legumes. So as that carbon, uh, the rye and things are slower to break down, those legumes that are in that mix, the clovers and such, are going to break down faster. Feeding my tomato plants in my garden right off the bat. And by the time they're needing another dose of nutrients, 
those other higher carbon and nitrogen elements are going to be breaking down, feeding the microbes, feeding my tomato plants for me and my family. Hopefully that makes sense, guys. If you enjoy this stuff, please share, subscribe, and follow along. And please check us out at vitalizedseed.com. We sure do appreciate you.